All right, welcome back, folks, to some more Cross Time Saloon. A fantastic game based off the Spider Robinson novels. I'm with you. Stand behind me. What? Just stand behind me. Hold up the other arms. Robot, could you scooch over to one side just a little? At a robot. Come on. Come on, boy. Apparently satisfied with your appearance, the robot drifts aside and permits you to enter. As you float down into the room using handholds until you pull of gravity exerts itself, the robot notices Noah begins to scan Noah, then there's a sudden poppy noise elsewhere on the satellite. It's sort of the sound that would immediately precede the phrase, Houston, we have a problem. The robot goes off to investigate maintenance of the satellite, being its top priority. Saved by the bell. No way I was going to wear that get up. This reminds you of an elaborate gunk all over your face, which is getting horribly uncomfortable, now that he mentions it. You remove the contact lenses, sushi decoration, air freshener, and putty, and stuff everything safely in your pockets for later. Hey, I just said I wouldn't wear it. For you, it's an improvement. Yeah, fuck you, Indiana. Holy shit balls. turns off the spinning satellite and the bottom one turns off the force field. Like the robot is uh, hard at work there. Thank you. 
Pulse module, the satellite is pulsing with energy, the origin of which is a massive semisphere of circuitry that fills half the room. Then we're going to have to go back to the main room here. Fucking retard. One at a time, you know, go back across the decam decontamination chamber. Trading places. This vehicle room has several storage compartments. It must be the supply room. Without gravity, you don't need a ladder. In fact, if it wasn't for gravity, the entire ladder industry would collapse. So we got some boots, a weapon-like object, and some kind of flamethrower, propane torch, DV, majiggy. Don't fucking ask me. I don't know. I just work here. That's more like it. This is it. This is the thing that's doing the big Walter Mitty number on us. You're sure? Sure. I thought you knew so much about science fiction. Let me get to work on this. I may be able to simply cut off the catalyst, but leave the thing running. Squish's friends and family won't fix it if they don't know something's wrong with it. Uh, give me those boots. I'll need something to cut some cable with. Uh, give me that thing we found in the other room. You hand the weapon or tool to Noah. Thanks. I'm getting to work. Alright, we'll let Noah work. In the meantime, let's check out some of these other hatches. yourself into a room and find yourself outside on a craggy mountaintop overlooking a couple of tent camps. You decide to go right overlooking them, and when it's time to leave the nest, you float back out into the lobby. You suddenly find yourself on the bridge of another spacecraft entirely, this one the USS Lexington, 
suddenly deserted. At first, you're completely confused, and after a moment, you realize you've been momentarily transported into a cheap plug for mission critical. Not being prepared to explore a 9 level 22nd century battle cruiser and an alien world in seamless smooth scrolling 3D, you back out to the satellite's game room and into the lobby. And this is, of course, the game developer's little ha ha. Check out all the other games that we made. The first one was Shannara, and the other one was Mission Critical. I have no idea what this is. You're confronted with an entire wall display of cryptic series of graphics. You recognize it as your friend's home program computer version of a strategy game, Globo. Last seen traveling the universe in search of a publisher. Any intelligent life out there wants to publish it, call this stupid fucking number and ask for Jim. And I've done this game. This is Death Gate. Before you looms a stone gate. You're clearly in a fantasy world of magical runes, nightmarish labyrinths, and an earth sundered into pieces. You wonder if the architects say to each other, Hmm, the master would be very disappointed if the gate isn't evil looking enough. Let's add more pointy bits. Creeped out by the sulfurous smell, you pull yourself out of the game room and back into the lobby of satellite. And you can actually go in and out of there several, several, several times for more funny little glimpses on other games created by this company. Kind of funny, kind of cool. I always like the little tidbits like that, the little Easter eggs, if you will. All right, get the fuck off that. Let's see, we're back in the control room, I think. Robot's no longer here. I wonder if he's over here annoying Noah. Of course he is. He's beeping faster, Jake. Kiss my fucking ass, robot. You aim the laser at the robot. When you pull the trigger, a narrow, brilliant beam of light skewers the air. It strikes the robot, or rather an inch or so in front of it, and illuminates an otherwise invisible shield. The shield absorbs the beam without apparent harm to the robot. As soon as the light winks out, so does the shield. The robot fortunately ignores the shot, preparing, perhaps detecting that it came from friendly equipment. It was merely a mistake. Either that or it's laughing at you on the Jake, inside. Jake, I'm not kidding. 
Get rid of this guy, would you? You might want to fix that. The robot's top priority takes over and it immediately moves to repair the hole you put in the hole. Well, that was an interesting risk. Let's get out of this room while we still can. Are you finished? Give me 20 seconds. You hear that? I'll look. Get the hell out of here and meet me in the shuttle. Meanwhile, back at Callahan's place. Say, do you think I should have told him about the emitter cutoff mothership alert? I really should have. Oh, well, the mothership. Good lord, it's the mothership. This opens a hailing frequency to the mothership. All you hear in response is a lot of angry, glurpy mother sounds. Like, motherfuck you, and motherfuck this, and... Motherfucking gigantic goat turds of doom. Fuck you. And save your game, you slappy cunt. Mothership is mother pissed. Mothership locks its tractor beam on a squishy subtle, rocking the entire satellite. The testosterone precipitator loses it, spraying Noah full in the face with pure distilled testosterone. The reaction is immediate and dramatic. Whoa. Noah runs to the shuttle. At first, you're not even sure it's him. But who else would it be? Break out of the tractor beam. Alrighty then. Wonder. Just be gonna break out of the fucking shock to me, you son of a bitch. The shuttle displays the f shows a field appear. Given that this is probably a cloaking or shield button, you surmise that the green buttons are concerned with offense defense. And judging from the complexity of the array above it, the red buttons are probably navigational tools.
got shields on, which helps cut the tractor beam from the mothership, but it's not enough. You're going to have to reach top speed before you'll be able to cut loose. TTT. We're out, but they're right on our tail. Hang on, let me. No one punches buttons hard enough to make sparks fly from the panel. The shuttle whirls around and heads straight for the satellite. Oh my god. Check me out, son. I'm buff Indiana Jones, motherfucker. Setting a course for the bar. Aye, aye. You and Noah go out into the parking lot. By the time you and Noah get back to the bar, the effects of the concentrated dose of testosterone are already wearing off Noah. But they remain just long enough to let him beat Mike Shorty and long drink at Armour's. Meanwhile, you relate the story of yours at Noah's trip into orbit. They will be back. They are infinitely persistent. So are we. What have you accomplished? Haven't you just delayed the inevitable? We're assuming it's not inevitable. It's only inevitable if we don't do anything about it. Besides, we had fun. We faked out your robot big time. We got to swim around weightless. That right there was worth the price of admission. I'd do it again. Me too. Next Sunday? Squish? Why not? All right, folks, and that's it for this quest. Join us again in another video for quest number four. See you soon, motherfuckers. Booyaka! <laughs>